highlights of, of our work. Uh, and I do urge you have a look at the um, annual report and the website because there's more than I can possibly cover uh, here today. But to give you some highlights, um, it was great to hear from Emma and Natasha about person centred care. We couldn't have planned that better. <laughs> um, and it, it, yeah, they, they've said much more clearly than I could why it's so important and how it improves outcomes. So we're really proud to be doing so much around person centred care. So for sure, the nursing standard, but also some of the key tenets and pillars of um, personalised care are things that we're working on. So central to that is the personalised care and support plan, um, shared decision making, the, the means by which the clinician and the patient jointly consider the options and make a decision and record it, absolutely key. Social prescribing, uh, the about me standard that, that Emma talked about, these are all really important changes, so it's great that they're all moving forward. At the same time, the shared uh, care record, and that the core person's shared care record of, of which the care plan is part, um, is based on PRSB standards, and that's the game changer. So again, it's great to see that that's taking root and really starting to be delivered. And as Emma said, imagine the difference if this was in wide scale use and it was the norm rather than the little um, islands of islands of excellence. Um, in terms of social care standards that I mentioned, um, they're, they're, the standards are being used and they're showing real benefits already, which is which is great to see. So in southwest London, work on the um, the transfer from care homes to um, emergency uh, in, in emergency situations to hospitals have been implemented and evaluated and are already showing really significant benefits and telling a story of what can be achieved. So. Um, emergency department attendance is down by 11%, average length of stay down by a day and a half, ambulance transfers down by uh, 12%. So really palpable evidence of how standards are important and how they can help. We put our members to work on um, COVID to, uh, to look at um, what lessons were learned from COVID and what is it that we need to do and how can we influence the system moving forward. I'm pleased to say that most of those things are being picked up and, 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 and moving forward. COVID, very sadly, COVID also shone a really harsh light on end of life care and recording end of life wishes um, and some really um, quite heartbreaking stories from people about you know, where that wasn't working. So um, we were pleased to work with one of our, our members, Compassion in Dying, on that. We had more than 2,000 replies in the first afternoon, as people see it as so important. Um, but if it, there was ever an imperative to get on and um, finalise that standard, which we're working on, and get it into wide, widespread use, I, I don't know what it is. And on, thanks, Alana. So <clears throat> a few more. Um, for those of you with a, a, of a more technical bent, we did work on a logical model. So the core information standard is, is the standard that supports shared care records. And what we did was take that, without going into lots of detail, to a lot lower level of detail and granularity. And it was in response to just suppliers and implementers telling us that that's what they need so that they can pick up the standard and take it and implement it, which is the whole point. So it's quite a lot of technical work in the background, but really important and advanced the cause uh, significantly. Similarly, with pathology, uh, we've worked with NHS Digital, colleagues in NHS Digital for a long time on uh, creating unified, uh, standardised um, test requests and reports uh, for pathology, obviously a uh, critically important area. And we were quite innovative in using or developing an ele electronic demonstrator or like a simulation, if you like, that showed how the clinical information, the standardised information that we defined could be incorporated into technical messages, transmitted digitally, validated, received and used. So it was an important advance in interoperability and proving that some of these things can be done and that they can work and uh, advancing the cause of sharing pathology test results safely and effectively across the system. Um, pharmacy standards were, were crucial in capturing and monitoring COVID and flu vaccinations uh, and so on. So lots of examples, but please do have a look at the, um, at the annual report. So, um, <clears throat> PRSB is a UK wide uh, organisation and undoubtedly stronger uh, for being so. 
Um, and so we were pleased this year to see uh, much wider and improvement in inclus inclusivity and, and participation across all of the UK. Um, so virtual working helped that for sure, but also um, a recognition, I think, that resources are scarce. We mostly face common challenges um, and, and we're stronger together. We work better together. And so we've had far greater cross-nation contribution to uh, our consultation events. Um, PRSB are committed to that, as are all of the UK nations themselves. And it's heartening to see increasingly when standards are commissioned, um, that they are recognising increasingly that uh, UK context uh, and the benefits of that. So things like the diabetes standard, a really important development for us this year, has been mapped to the Scottish data set. We've got clinicians in Belfast closely involved and working on it. Natasha's talked about the nursing standard and we've drawn heavily on you know, work that excellent work that was undertaken in Wales. Same for the shared decision making standard. All of these are really positive. I mean, we get a better end result. We strengthened our advisory board and, and welcome Paul Mason alongside Rebecca Cook to represent Wales and Lisa White for Northern Ireland. Welcome to them. We had a fantastic discussion earlier in the year from Jonathan Cameron in Scottish Government talking about the digital health and care uh, strategy for Scotland and most importantly what PRSB can do to support that. Welsh Government are looking to endorse standards, that's a step forward and one that we really, we really welcome. It's symbolic but really important and it lets people in Wales, you know, both patients and, uh, and professionals, know that it's by them and for them absolutely and equally. And last of all, the partnership scheme that, that I mentioned. So the more we can work with our system suppliers and, and progress uh, conformance with standards, all of those suppliers, or pretty much all of those suppliers are, are working UK wide, if not internationally. And hence we're advancing the whole, the whole cause of, um, of standards and interoperability and consistency. <laughs> 